And yeah, she's gorgeous. This product really, truly shocked me. This is the Glow Recipe. I know, I know. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> My views doubled in a day. Girl, you gotta stay on the cup. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm here to share my February favorites because here we are once again. So if you guys would like to see all my fab finds for the month of February, then please keep watching. Okay, guys. So like always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I know these are your favorite videos, uh, but I specifically want to say because moving forward in March, we will be moving to our new one video a week schedule. And that gives us a segue into the first thing I wanna talk about. But yeah, if you like this video or any other video, Video, be sure to like it so that I know how to guide the content moving forward. So, you all know last month I put out a video about what space I was in with YouTube and that I was pivoting largely away from content creation, which is still true. In that video, <laughs> I got a few comments just stating, it, they were not negative comments by the way. I'm not that person who thinks that um, any bit of disagreement is negative or hate. This is just my opinion and I am not God, so you are free to have your own opinion and I don't take it with any amount of like, I don't think it's a jab. Quite a few people disagreed and that is okay. But a few comments that I got, people were stating how, <sighs> how I feel about YouTube is not just because it's pretty privilege and I was kind of using pretty privilege as a blanket category to talk about the privilege of being lighter skinned and I'm not even talking about my complexion, I'm talking about fair skinned African Americans and or <laughs> mixed biracial content creators. Obviously we know that there are discrepancies uh, from European American creators and African American creators. There are also certain types of biases and privilege for how much people show or display their wealth. There is also an aesthetic y, vibey bias. Um, the clean girl aesthetic. You know, all these things that I feel like I was trying to say without really saying because I don't want people to feel like I'm saying if you fit into those categories that I'm like putting a target on your back because I'm not. But I'm in this space where I know that what I bring to the platform is not what is pushed out. It is not what is celebrated and it is not even what people largely prefer. Case in point, I did a little experiment this month. I had a luxury video that I put out that did horribly. <laughs> I talked about it on Instagram because it flopped and I didn't take it any way. In that video that I put out last month, I talked about how I don't have imposter syndrome. Like my videos may not do well analytically speaking, ranking views wise, but I know what I bring to the table. I know that my editing is amazing for where I am in terms of my knowledge. Um, my production may not be the best, but it's also not horrible. So I understand that a lot of why I don't get views is not related to my worth, my value, what I bring to the platform. It's just the type of content I make is not celebrated and how I convey myself, my thoughts and opinions are not uh, 
what is massively perceived as being worthy. And I'm putting this in air quotes because this is society's deem of worthy. So I did a little experiment where I changed the thumbnail of that video because you all know that I have everything I could possibly need, <laughs> let's say that. But because my collection is fairly large, I am really in my vintage era. But I understand that um, a lot of people aren't. So I did a little experiment to see how changing the thumbnail would change the views on the video. So before I changed the thumbnail and did a double, well not a double blind experiment, but it was an experiment that you all and YouTube didn't know <laughs> that you were participating in. So before I changed the thumbnail, I had about 500 views in one day, which I usually get closer to a thousand. That's pretty normal for me. So I changed the thumbnail to include a white G-Wagon, Van Cleef and Arpel jewelry, Cartier bracelets, um, an Hermes Birkin, basically all the things that when we think about society deeming as luxury, preferred, popular, that is the status symbol that these items have. They are highly acclaimed products, jewelry pieces. They are maybe a car that a lot of people would want. It is a car that a lot of people who are influencers tend to drive. And so I just wanted to know um, how my videos would do if I cater to what society feels as being like, you know, it girl stuff or you, you know what I'm trying to say. And it worked. <laughs> my views doubled in a day. So that's what I was talking about in the video where I was speaking about my kind of disdain for content creation in this space is that I know that that is what is preferred, not only by my subscribers, but by YouTube. Content is pushed um, pertaining to the thumbnail, the content, but it's really about looks. So I just wanted to share that's why I, I don't give too much weight on the views that I get. Could my videos do way better? Should they? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I know what I bring to this platform. I know where my expertise lie and the clickbaity thumbnail proved it all. It was highly disappointing, but also confirmed the own hypothesis I had myself, which was that if I were to acquiesce to what society sees as cool, popular, in, my channel would be further along. But unfortunately for the YouTube algorithm, maybe subscribers and non-subscribers, I'm not gonna do that. So that was a part of my month because after I realized that, I was like, this is exactly why I don't prefer to create content anymore. But um, at the end of the day, I am here for you guys. So once again, that is why I'm staying. So let's get into my tangible favorites. Um, it was an interesting month. <laughs> <laughs> the first favorite I want to talk about is my Stanley Cup. We're just gonna go in any old order this month. I know what you're thinking. Girl, you got a Stanley Cup. I know, I know, I know. Now, I really only got this because I had $20 in Nordstrom notes. Hold on, I'm a little dehydrated. Ooh, I had $20 in Nordstrom notes. And if you guys saw a few of my vlogs this month, it has been hard for me to get all of my water intake in. And as silly as this sounds, it's true. You get a new cute cup and you get a wide straw, you would drink all of your intake of water for the day. So I fill this up twice. It's a 40 ounce tumbler and I get all my water intake for the day. Yes, this is huge. Yes, it's annoying to carry around, but I really only have to carry it around my house. Will I be a Stanley girl? Girl that gets four and five water no. but is this a nice product yes would I have paid full price for it absolutely not so we bless Nordstrom for Nordstrom notes because I got this like almost half off I do enjoy it I would recommend it but I'm not like Stanley crazed but I do enjoy it, so shout out to my cup. <laughs> so since we're going in a reverse order, my next piece is probably one of the most special pieces in my entire luxury collection. A Louis Vuitton ostrich leather card holder. I will give you guys some close up mod shots. I received this for Christmas this year and this was so special. Uh, you guys know that I love card holders, card cases. I do kind of want to do an SLG collection, but you all know that I'm kind of leery about sharing like, <sighs> 
If you would like me to do an SLG collection, let me know down below and I will think about it. But I do have some really special pieces in my collection and this is for sure one. Louis Vuitton will always be my favorite luxury brand, though I don't prefer them anymore, just kind of in the way that they are moving with their quality concerns and such. But this ostrich piece is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It is in this beautiful shade of mint. One thing that I will say is that if you are looking for a card holder that holds a lot, she is not for you. This is what I would wear tonight because I am going out. If I have a slim bag, if it's a special occasion, this is a special piece. It's not something I would use every day. And comfortably, you can probably only fit two to three cards, but this really is a special piece that is so gorgeous. It's so special, it's so unique. I mean, I never thought that I would have luxury ostrich anything in my collection, so. This is just super, super special and it's so soft and sumptuous. It is just perfection. So if you ever come across an ostrich SLG from Louis Vuitton, I would highly recommend it. This is quality and I love her. Okay, my next piece that I wanna talk about is this necklace, which you guys have probably seen in largely all the videos for this month, but this is my David Yurman diamond cross necklace that I also received for Christmas. Um, I've always wanted a David Yurman cross. You all know that David Yurman is my favorite designer for jewelry because I love silver. I'm not wearing my bracelets today because I was rushing and forgot to put them on, but oh, I also have some new David Yurman earrings that I got for about Valentine's Day, but yeah, <laughs> this necklace is so beautiful. I have recently strengthened my walk with Christ, and so I always knew I wanted a cross piece, but now that I'm in this place with God, it just means so much more to wear this around my neck with pride and yeah, I won't, I won't get into it and start preaching and get sentimental, but this piece means so much to me. Um, more than just being David Yearman, it's a cross and it just signifies, um, yeah, my love of God. Um, yeah, so definitely this piece, it has been a favorite for sure. My next favorite is this pink YSL bag. Can you guys see her? I love this baby so much. I'm actually going to be wearing her to dinner tonight. And oh my goodness, this hobo bag just makes me so happy. Like I said, I'm definitely in my vintage era right now. And this just reminds me of the bags of childhood. Um, It is a very simplistic bag. There's nothing to interest interesting about it, but it's the prettiest pop of pink. It's just so fun. It was perfect for the Valentine's Day season. Yeah, and I do just really, really enjoy this bag. You can find this on the pre-owned market. Love it so much. And it's just, it's a yummy little bag. We love YSL so much. So she was definitely a favorite of mine for sure after, you know, having had her for maybe almost two months. Well, January, February, yeah, two months. <laughs> so I've been loving this bag. Oh, this is called the Cinca Saint, the 5A7. And this is the larger of the two sizes. I just think this is such a classically chic, nostalgic kind of 90s era piece that I love so much. And yeah, she's gorgeous. Okay, fragrance. The first fragrance that I wore so much this month and that I actually wore it out for Valentine's Day. I went out with my friend the day before Valentine's Day and everybody who was in close proximity to me gave me so many compliments. This is Louis Vuitton Etrape I love this baby so much. Ooh, this is rose. This is lychee. This is maybe a little bergamot, chocolate. This is the epitome of Valentine's Day. It's sweet, it's sexy, it's intense. If you overspray her, it is just, whew, the sillage is amazing and it lasts forever. This is such a beautiful fragrance. This was my first Louis Vuitton fragrance. I think I received a sample of this when I purchased my Noé GM and I fell in love and this will forever be my favorite of the line. It is a very unique rose. You all know that rose is one of my favorite scents. It's sweet, it's sexy, it's a little citrusy but it's just deep and yummy. And this is like, oh, it's Valentine's Day in a bottle. So Louis Vuitton et Rev. love this so much. My second fragrance of the month that I was loving is Black Opium from YSL. And this is Le Parfum. Ooh. 
Oh my goodness. This just smells like vanilla extract plus coffee plus a tiny bit of rose. Now, I don't know if rose is a note in here, but to me, this just smells like a bunch of vanilla with a little bit of coffee in it. <laughs> it smells like a coffee creamer. It is thick and sweet and beautiful. It's not a very complex scent, but it is lovely. And you all know that I'm in my vanilla era. I will link a video down below where I shared my top vanilla fragrances of my collection. And this is what I go for when I want a really sweet, heavy, and thick vanilla that literally makes your mouth water. Ugh, she's just so yummy. I might wear her tonight. I love this. I'm not really a fan of the other YSL Black Opiums. They don't mix well with my body chemistry. Although I did try yesterday the uh, Black Opium, the new one with the cherry. It's a very light cherry note, but I do enjoy that. But Le Parfum will always be my favorite of the line for sure. Okay, let's get into some skincare. First, you guys, you all, you all will be, be so, so shocked. shocked because if you used to watch the series on my channel where I rate PR packages, you know this brand and I were usually not on the same, we're not on the same terms. This product really truly shocked me. This is the Glow Recipe. I know, I know. <laughs> The Glow Recipe Cloudberry Bright Essence Toner. You all, this is amazing. This is a toner that helps you brighten and hydrate your skin. Uh, to me, this is like a vitamin C essence. So an essence and a toner are almost the same. An essence is a little thicker, a little more viscous in texture. A toner is usually like 100% liquid, like the consistency of water. This is a bit thicker, but you just tap it into your skin and it makes your skin so juicy and hydrated. I can't really speak to if this brightens my skin yet, but what I will say about Glow Recipe, usually my dislike comes in the consistency and I love this consistency. It's like a booster. So if you find that maybe in this season, your skin is a bit more dry and dehydrated, or maybe you've just come through a bout of acne like I do tend to experience a lot, adding a product like this is nice because it's very minimal in terms of the addition in your skincare routine, but it adds such a great burst of hydration. I love this. I have to do a review on my Instagram because I know I've been pretty harsh on Glow Recipe in the past, but it's just me being honest. But while I also like to share things that I don't appreciate, maybe because they just don't work for me, texture, scent, things like that, it's equally important, I think, to share some of those same brands that work really well. So I will be talking about this on my Instagram. Fabulous product. If you love Glow Recipe and you're looking for hydration and brightening, definitely give this a try because I can't believe I love it, but I do. Okay, my next product is a bit of a fail, but I still wanted to talk about this product because it may help someone else whose skin type is a bit different. This is the Grown Alchemist Melt Away Gel Milk Cleanser. If you saw my Hawaii vacation series on my channel in January, you know that when I flew to Hawaii, we flew Delta One and the amenities kit that we got in Delta One featured Grown Alchemist products. Now, I didn't love all of them, I will be honest, <laughs> but also in the bathroom in first class and in the Delta Sky Lounge, they had Grown Alchemist cleansers for your hands and lotion, and I fell in love. So when they reached out to me wanting to send their newest product, I was so excited. So once again, this is a gel milk cleanser. Now, I would say this is great for removing makeup. I will insert some pictures on the screen. I used it a few nights ago to to take off my makeup. And if you have very dry skin or dry skin, you will probably like this. I have never used a makeup cleansing balm, oil, gel, milk that left my skin so hydrated. But because I don't have dry skin, I really don't prefer the texture. But like I said, if you have dry skin, I think you would enjoy this. I need something that's just gonna get me squeaky clean because I'm still oily, though it is cooler outside. So this is not a star for me, but if you have dry skin, definitely try this out. I also like that they included this little key that you can turn to help advance the product so you're not like struggling to squeeze it out like a 
tube of toothpaste. So this was not a winner for me, but I do think it's a great product. You just have to know your skin type. I'm an oily gal, so this texture is not my favorite, but it's great for traveling because it's not a liquid. And if you have dry skin, you'll probably love it. Another favorite this month, and I forgot to bring it, my Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads. You all know those are just sensational, like Future says. Those help to add so much brightness and hydration to my skin. They are the reason why I don't break out like I used to and also how I've been able to lighten a lot of the pigmentation on my skin. So I stand by those peel pads so much. Every few months I like to talk about them because sometimes people reach out and they're like, girl, these are so awesome. How come you never talked about it? And I'm like, <laughs> Hold the phone. I talk about these peel pads all the time. I started using them probably maybe a year and a half to two years ago, and it has been the best product for my acne prone skin. I use the extra strength, but they also have normal and sensitive. Now I will say, some people are still too sensitive for the sensitive version. If you are very, very sensitive, just steer clear of these peel pads because it's a professional peel system that is very, very strong. It uses, I think, five to seven different types of acids depending on which peel variety that you choose. But for my acneic skin, it works really, really well. And I, I can always tell when I'm not using them, but I try to use them about two to three times a week because they get rid of all texture, they get rid of fine lines, my hyperpigmentation and they also help keep my acne at bay which we love next I want to talk about my cozy earth pajamas it's gonna be hard for you guys to see them. I will include pictures on the screen. I've been wearing these all over my Instagram. You all know that loungewear pajamas, like I live in them. I wake up and I either put on active wear or loungewear, but Cozy Earth, ugh. In 2023, no, in 2022 for Christmas, I received the Cozy Earth robe, the kimono robe, and I fell in love. I was like, it's a cotton robe that's over $100. Do I really need this? And then I received it for Christmas and I said, absolutely. This fabric is amazing. First of all, look at the weight of it. Like look how it stretches as I pull it. I love the robe so much that I had to get the pajamas. Now the pajamas were on back order for almost a month, but I did finally receive them. So, so comfortable, so stretchy. They're nicely weighted. They're not too hot feeling. They keep you warm. They're just luxurious. It's a bamboo cotton fabric that is stretchy and comfortable. If you like a modal or a modal knit, this feels kind of similar. I wear a size extra large. I have extra large in the top and the bottoms. And I do have a coupon code to save 40% on your first order using Keiko 40. <sighs> If you have not tried Cozy Earth and you don't mind paying a little more for luxurious pajamas and loungewear and sheets and linens and towels, definitely try them out. I have gotten so many of my friends and my family hooked on them. I know not everybody wants to spend upwards of 80 to $100 on pajamas if you use my code, but baby, <laughs> the difference. Amazing. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is a Netflix movie. It's called Inheritance, and it's about a politician who died and he left to his daughter this man in a dungeon in his backyard. <laughs> it was a really great movie. I won't give it away. I love finding new movies and series on Netflix. You guys know that I've really been reclaiming my time in 2024, and part of that is getting back to the things that bring me joy the small things and sometimes it could just be watching one movie just to you know do something where I don't have to use too much of my brain and I can just enjoy myself and inheritance is really great I'm finding that I love like a good psychological thriller or a murder mystery I don't know why I thought I really loved comedy but I guess <laughs> I guess that my tastes are changing so definitely check out that it's a really great movie lots of twists and turns that I didn't predict because you guys know that I like to try to predict the movie and I was wrong <laughs> so those are all my favorites for the month guys I hope you enjoyed this month overall was great so many amazing things happened don't forget to check out my website down below I just thank you all for all your support and love February was a short month but it was a great one I can't wait to see you guys in March I love you so much and I We'll see you in the next video. Bye.